If you're a free-to-play or a low-spender player in Rise of Kingdoms, it can be extremely difficult to decide which commanders are going to be best for your account. Like, which commanders could you actually use and still get a lot of value from them for a cheap investment, and which commanders are able to be paired with as many commanders as possible. So in today's video, I'm going to go over the top 10 free-to-play low spender commanders. I'll list them all, I'll tell you who their best pairings are, I'll tell you how to get the most value out of them, and also their best skills. So if you wanna know which commanders are really, really good as a free-to-play low spender, maybe even a medium spender, you wanna stick around till the end of the video. <laughs> Now let's start off today's video by quickly explaining how do I decide which commanders are good for free to play players and there's really three main things I take into account. First of all, how easy can you access the commander? Are they in gold keys? Are they in wheel of fortune? Are they in mightiest governor? Or are they literally completely free? The other thing I take into account is how many skills do they need to become effective because if a commander needs a full expertise to become very viable then they're probably not going to even place on this list because for example YSG who is not on the list I'll just spoil that now the re one of the main reasons he isn't is because to get him to be really effective especially towards season of conquest and beyond you need his expertise which is just not as viable nowadays with how fast commanders are coming out. So that is something I also take into account. Can I use them at a lower skill level, especially towards the end game? The final thing I take into account though is how viable are they with other commanders? So if a commander is very, very generic and they work with just about anyone, then that commander is going to get a lot of points for a free to play list. Because if I'm looking at commanders and they're really specific, only work with one or two commanders, it's going to be much harder for me to really give them a good rank because they're really, really specific. I can't put them with as many commanders. They're way more restricted in that regard, and especially when new commanders get released, it can be very difficult for these commanders to find a place in the meta. A good example is Artemisia. If an archer commander doesn't release with silence immunity, she's almost useless. So when we look at these commanders, they need to have a lot of broad use with a ton of other commanders, whether it be of their troop type or of other troop types. So now that we know what makes a free to play or a low spender commander, let's start off with my first commander of today's video, and that is Ethelflaed. Ethelflaed is a literal free commander, but she still comes in at rank 10. And you might be thinking, why am I putting Ethelflaed at rank 10? Well, there are a few reasons. First of all, let me just iterate though, that Ethelflaed is really, really strong. There is no doubt about it that for a literally free commander, she has a lot of use, not only in the open field, but she's a peacekeeping commander who you can use barbarian forts with. So she's got lots of value in terms of not just open field, but also peacekeeping. But when I look at Ethelflaed's kit, I do have one main issue with it. She doesn't really have anything that makes her completely stand out. The only thing that makes her fully stand out is her debuffs. And the issue with those debuffs is they only really work with a specific commander because she's a very support oriented commander. She doesn't have the damage to carry a march to the position it wants to be. And as a free to play low spender, you need to have a lot of damage before you can start bringing in a lot of these really debuff heavy commanders. Like obviously debuffs are valuable, but if they're the only thing in your motor ball pretty much, they're not going to be as valuable. So Ethelflaed, the reason she comes in at rank 10 is her pairings are very restricted. And unless you want to access some of these more exotic commanders, she is difficult to use. Ethelflaed's best pairings are really simplified. I would say she's really, really good with Trajan, which is not very afraid free to play commander, but she's really, really good with him. She's also fairly decent with Charles Martel who is not very free to play towards the end game because you need to have him at least 5511 and even then he is a not very overpowered commander so he's not really on this list he's a little bit more specific as well and then the other commander I would say Ethelflaed is really good with is probably Saladin that's the last commander I would say that she has a standout top pairing with because yes yeah, she might work slightly with every other commander in the game but those are the main ones you're going to put her with and other than that, she won't perform as well and she won't have as much viability. But obviously, she still gets a place on the list because she is one of the easiest commanders in the game to access. Now, coming in at number 9, we've got Julius Caesar. And you might be wondering, why is Julius Caesar even on my list? Well, simply put, Julius Caesar gets most of his effectiveness from his first two skills, his active skill and his second skill, where he gets some ridiculous amounts of all damage. First of all, he just takes 10% less all damage on the open field. Whenever he has 60% or fewer units, 10% chance to reduce all damage he takes by 30% for three seconds. His active skill, you get a 20% attack and defense bonus and also 30% increased all damage. And that lasts for five seconds. That's one of the longest lasting active skill buffs in the game. So just looking right off the bat, he's got crazy stats in those first 
those two skills. For a commander that's from the Gold Keys, these stats are really, really good. The only thing he's really lacking is damage factor. And the reason he's even on this list is because there's one thing in his relic that makes him stand out in a way. And that one thing in his relic is that he gets a ton more all damage. When we look at Julius Caesar's relic, he gets another 20% all damage, just permanent stats, and another 20% march speed. It is really, really strong for a relic. Arguably better than Mehmed's relic, because Mehmed's 30% health, 10% skill damage. Caesar's basically the same amount of stats, but in arguably a way more premium stat, being all damage, and also in march speed. So what Caesar has over a commander like Mehmed, or a more universal commander, is that Caesar has a good amount of march speed. And the reason I bring that up is because March Speed is something that makes a commander very universal, and since Caesar's stats are not specific for troop type, he works with just about any commander who has really good damage factor already, but needs someone with extra March Speed. So, for example, a Caesar with and Lao Che is actually a decent pairing, because Lao Che, yeah, he's got some March Speed, but the thing is, you would rather have a lot more March Speed on him, because he is an infantry commander, and Caesar's all damage is really, really good with Lao Che, because Caesar is able to pretty much just throw off extra smite damage on that active skill. It is really, really good. And Lao Che is probably not his best pairing, but one of his best pairings, in my opinion, is actually with Zhu Lang. A Caesar with Zhu Lang is really, really strong, because we look at Zhu Lang's kit, and yes, it is a good kit, no doubt about it, but he's got zero march speed, and putting him with a commander that's got more march speed is going to be really, really good. Another thing to take note here, though, is that Caesar has to be a primary, which can be really, really difficult. Yes, you can run him as a secondary if you just want his stats, but if you want to get that active skill extra damage on an active skill for the next commander, he has to be the primary commander. So those are the two main disadvantages with Caesar. He's lacking damage factor, he has to be the primary, but he does make up for it in the regard that he's got a crap load of stats, and he's kind of like a Mehmed, but he gives March Speed. That's the best way I like to look at him. And it definitely does give him quite a bit of value on the open field for someone who maybe has a Zhu Lang, but doesn't really have a good March Speed commander to go with him. Now, coming in at number eight, we have Sargon the Great. I know it kind of rhymes. That wasn't intentional, but there's definitely a good reason to put Sargon slightly lower on this list. And the reason is because he is still somewhat of a heavy investment. When we look at his kit, 5550 is really what you want. You want to max his first three skills, you don't want to touch that fourth skill. You don't even want to unlock it. So when you look at Sargent's kit, he is cheaper than going for expertise, but he is still around almost, I think, maybe a 400 and something gold head investment. Maybe it's like 300 something gold heads. That is still very, very expensive. And you can't take him past like level 30 as a free-to-play player, which definitely is going to be difficult if you want to run him as a primary. So you're basically stuck with Sargon, who is usually going to be a primary commander because he's got really good talent trees as a secondary commander. And that can be quite frustrating as a free-to-play low spender because you don't want to unlock that fourth skill. It literally makes him weaker on the open field. So yes, Sargon is a cheaper investment, but the thing is when we look at Sargon's kit, he has to be the secondary commander while he also wants to be the primary. So he is difficult to use in that regard. But that being said, he definitely has a lot of value. Really, really good active skill damage. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, he's literally the best commander in the game. He's got very, very nice debuff as well. His ord effect, which pretty much allows him to do what Tamiris does in a way, basically makes the opponent take a bunch more skill damage. So that is a really, really good thing to have on a commander. And he's quite universal with which infantry commanders I could put him with. You can put Sargon with Lauche, Sargon with Alex, Sargon with Scipio, Sargon with Guan, Sargon with Tarek, Sargon with pretty much any infantry commander will work. And then even a Sargon with a Mehmed or a Sargon with a Caesar are options as well. So, so I like that utility about him being able to work with a lot of commanders and being able to provide a lot of utility to a murderable. So I think giving him spot A is fairly justified because he does have some downsides, but he also has quite a few upsides for a free to play and a low spender. Now coming in at number seven in today's list, we have Boudicca Prime. And the reason she's above Sargon is because I feel she does hold a little bit more value than Sargon due to the fact that she is an Archer Commander. And you're going to need an Archer Primary at some point. And Boudicca Prime is probably the current best free to play version available. When we look at Boudicca Prime's skill kit, she really just needs a 5551 skill and she's perfectly fine after that. Don't need her expertise for the most part. If you've got a Zhu Lang, she's pretty much going to have all of her effectiveness down pat because if her expertise is just Zhu Lang skill but slightly better. So Boudicca 5551 is perfectly fine for the open field. And the other thing I like about Boudicca, which Sargon doesn't have, is you can run her as a primary because Boudicca can go to level 60. It's not bad unlocking that fourth skill. It actually does help you, giving you 1% all damage. I know that's really low, but it's better than nothing. So Boudicca Prime does have that in her kit. She's got a really, really good debuff. Decent amount of stats, works well with literally any Archer Commander. I don't think there's a single one that's really bad with her. 
and you don't even need to get that fourth skill, so you don't need her expertise, which makes her a really cheap and easy investment, which is why I like Boudicca as an archer primary. In terms of her best pairings, literally any archer commander will work. She also works oddly good with Mehmed from what I've seen, so Boudicca with Mehmed, Boudicca with Zulang, and Boudicca with Artemisia are probably her standout pairings, but any archer commander you own, you could put with Boudicca, and you're going to get fairly good trades, which is why I do like where she is on this list. Now, coming in at number six, we have Lao Che, the newest infantry commander added to Rise of Kingdoms. And the reason I've placed Lao Che at rank six and not higher and even not lower is because I feel that he's got a lot of effectiveness at just 5-5-1-1. And the reason I say that is the thing is because he's the new meta infantry commander. He will work with literally just about anyone for now. Obviously, in the future, as we continue to have more commanders added to the game, he's going to fall down the ladder because Lao Che's expertise is where he gets a lot extra value. Because when you look at Lao Che's kit, yes, all of it is very, very strong, but most of his value is in those first two skills and then his expertise as well, which is why it can be very difficult for me to justify putting him higher on the list since that expertise holds a crazy amount of value rather than just the first two skills holding value. Because when we look at Budokan, we look at Sargon, those two commanders, their expertise are completely useless. And if they had more open field viability and more open field utility, they would be higher on this list. But Lao Che has all the open field viability and the open field utility and is one of the strongest commanders currently in the game, plus has an AoE. Only thing is that's holding him back, he does need that expertise, which is why I can't place him higher on the list. Lao Che's best pairings, I'm sure you've heard me say them before, Really, CPO, Sargon, and Gorgo. Those are going to be his three best pairings. His best free-to-play pairing, in my opinion, is a 5-5-5-1 CPO, because then you're left with like a very, very cheap double AoE, really strong infantry march, and I'm quite a fan of it. So, Lao Che with CPO is probably what most players are going to go with. I will steer you away, though, from a Lao Che with Guan. From what I've seen, it is not a very good pairing. Now, coming in at number five, we have Joan Prime, and the reason she gets such a high ranking on this list is because... She is a very cheap investment if you get lucky. If you get a 5-1-1-5 Joan Prime, you're probably one of the luckiest players in the game, but you've also got a really, really cheap commander who you can just use on the open field with Nevsky and have an absolutely destroying march. And even on her own, she is a really, really strong commander. I don't think I could see a way that Joan Prime is not used on the open field. You can use her with Zhang Yu if you wanted. You could use her with William. You could use her with Nevsky, Hao Che Bing. You can use her with Justinian even, and she's going to do good. Obviously, with William and Zhang Yu and all these more squishy commanders, she's not as powerful, but she's still going to hold her weight. So, Joan Prime is a commander. When I look at her kit, she's very, very universal in the regard that she's going to work with a lot of Cav commanders, and she's got a lot of standout pairings as well. The other thing I really like about Joan Prime, which gives her free-to-play value, is obviously that cheap skill investment and the fact that she can do double AoE, which is one of the strongest things in the game. Since free-to-play players, you're going to get most of your kills from AoE. You're not going to win one-on-one -on -one battles with massive whales and players who have much older accounts and more equipment. You're going to win battles where you get extra AoE on your opponent. So having those AoE commanders gives them a lot more value. And Joan Prime is probably one of the strongest AoE commanders in the game. Second to maybe Lao Che and second to maybe Zhu Lang. So Joan Prime, really, really powerful cavalry secondary. And a lot of cav mains will get her at a really cheap skill level. Whether it be like literally 5, 1, 1, 5. Or just keep trying to get the first skill and the fourth skill max. Because her second and third skill are also still fairly good. Even if you get points to land on them, they're not bad at all. So most players just get that first skill max and try and work on the fourth skill while picking up anything in between because it's not bad value as well. So Joan Prime, I'm definitely a big fan of her and I would say she's a good free-to-play commander. Now coming in at number four, we have Mehmed II, a commander that I'm sure every single player has heard of when someone says free-to-play commanders. And the reason is because he has pretty much everything you would want in a free-to-play commander. First of all, he has stats for any troop type. It is not specific to a single troop type. All troops will get his stats, but when his second skill, his fourth skill giving troop capacity, and then even his museum relic, which is probably one of, if not the strongest relics in here, maybe second to like Caesar and Minamoto, Mehmed gives 40% stats, 30% of it being health, 10% being skill damage, all very premium stats. So Mehmed is a commander who has a ton of stats, works really, really good as a secondary, and then to add extra on top of that, he has an AoE active skill. It's a five target AoE as well. And if you expertise him, you get a little bit more damage. So he's got value in his first two skills. He's got value in his fourth skill. And he's got value in his expertise. But really, you only need the first two skills to use him, which makes him a really good placeholder commander. A commander that you basically get to use while maybe you work on another commander. So for example, a Mehmed with a CPO Africanus is a really, really strong pairing. And the reason a lot of players run it is because you have Mehmed when you leave Season 3. You've got him at a decent level, and you can just slap him with that Sevier Africanus, 
while you work on your Guan Yu or while you work even on a Lao Che, you've got Mehmed there to just cover your back for the open field, which makes him a really strong and really pleasing commander. And the thing is, even after your CPO has a better pairing, your Mehmed can go somewhere else, whether it be with Nevsky, whether it be with Budokan, whether it be even with Zhang Yu, any commander who really has a skill tree or has some AoE or has some extra skill damage increase is going to work with Mehmed and he's very, very universal, which is why I really, really like him. Now, coming in at rank three, we've got Zhuo Lang, probably one of the most powerful archer commanders due to the fact that he's got AoE. For a free-to-play low spender, I'm really preaching AoE at the moment. AoE, 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 because if you've got an area of effect commander, you're going to get a lot more kills than if you just ran a single target commander. So, for example, if you were a free-to-play player who just hit Seasonal Conquest for the first time, and you probably don't have a Boudicca Prime, you don't have a YSG, and you don't have any other Archer commanders, Zulang might be one of your better choices, because he's got the AoE you need, and it's going to be really, really strong. It's a new meta AoE, he's got fire targets, he's got a debuff on it, and his second skill also has a lot of archer health, 30%, which is really, really good. He deals 5% more damage, and whenever he gets control effects, he gets to basically have a 50% chance to shrug them off, which is powerful, because that's like getting Boudicca's expertise, but slightly weaker, but literally for free. Even if you don't have a single point in his second skill, you get to still shrug off those debuffs, which is really, really strong. Also, Zhuo Lang can be a long-term project as well. When we look at his kit, he's got really, really good value on his third skill, but it's not 100% necessary. Obviously, it's valuable, but it is not completely needed. And he's got value on his fourth skill, but his fourth skill really ramps up once you get his expertise, where he gets to deal another double 4,500 damage AoE to three people. So, Zhuo Lang is a really, really strong commander with crazy damage factor, probably some of it, if not the best in the game currently. And he works so well that he literally beats Nevsky's and he literally beats every single infantry pairing. So, Zhuo Lang is probably one of, if not the strongest commanders in the game. And besides a few other counters to him, he's pretty much unstoppable. So, you couldn't say that he's a bad free to play choice. Even at 5 5 1 1, you're going to get a lot of value from him if you have a good primary or even a good secondary because he works as both a primary and a secondary commander. Zhu Lang's best pairings, really simply put, Boudicca Prime, Henry, YSG, Nebu, Mehmed Caesar, all those commanders are going to work really well with him. Out of the Mehmed and Caesar, I'd rather run him with a Caesar due to the fact that he has no march speed, that's his main downside, and Caesar can kind of help with that since Caesar has a decent amount of march speed and also a decent amount of all damage to allow Zhu Lang's AoE to literally hit that much harder. Now, coming in at rank 2, we have the only high-ranking single target damage commander, and that is Alexander Nevsky. And the reason he gets such a high rank on this list is because he's probably one of the most powerful cavalry commanders we've literally ever seen. He's got a very, very decent active skill damage factor, 2,300. He's got one of the strongest defense debuffs in the game, and he's just got a crazy amount of stats. We look at his kit on his second skill alone, he's got 60% of stats. That is ridiculous. That is an absolutely insane amount. Look at his third skill, and he's got another 35% of stats, and they're all very, very high value stats. All damage bonus, cavalry defense, all damage taken reduction, which I always say is one of the best stats in the game. And then his fourth skill even has more stats. He's one of the most stat heavy and most insane commanders in the game. And really simply put, Nevsky works with every single cav commander. I don't think there's a single cav commander, I would say, besides like Cicada, that works bad with Nevsky. Nevsky with Bertrand is even usable. Nevsky with Ziska is usable. Obviously, Nevsky is not going to be game breaking with them, but it's going to work. Nevsky with Joan is literally a meta pairing. Nevsky Zhang Yu, Nevsky William, Nevsky Hao Che Bing, Nevsky Justinian, Nevsky Attila, Nevsky Saladin. I've even seen Nevsky Khans, Nevsky Minas, and Nevsky Sao Sao. There is literally no commander in the game that doesn't work with Nevsky, that is a cavalry commander. And he even works with Caesar, and he even works with Mehmed. And on top of that, he even works with Honda. Like, I don't see a single commander in the game that does not work with Nevsky. So, Nevsky obviously gets a high place in the list for being one of the most universal cavalry commanders in the game. And to add extra on top of that, he can be invested at whatever level you choose. 5-5-1-1, five, five, one, one, perfectly fine. 5-5-5-1, five, 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 even better. Expertise, even better. So Nevsky is literally up to you. If you want to go all in on Cavs, you expertise him. If you want to use him just as a temporary commander, maybe as you wait for more commanders to come out, 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one is perfectly fine. So Nevsky is one of those commanders. It's a really cheap investment to get going at the minimum, and you can invest in him later, make him even stronger, and make him one of the best commanders in the game. So I'm a really big fan of Nevsky for free-to-play low spenders, 
and you're going to notice that he works really well with any commander that you want to put him with. Now, after much careful consideration for rank one in today's video, I've decided to give it to Scipio Africanus. And the reason I've done this is because he is one of the most powerful commanders in the game. Obviously, he's pretty much like Nevsky and like Zulang if they got put together and they made one commander, one super commander. Scipio is in that way, literally that commander. He's got an AoE active skill with a debuff that's extremely, extremely powerful. He's got very, very good stats on his second skill, literally around 65% there total, which is very, very decent. It's literally more than Nevsky's skill, to be honest. And obviously, a lot of it is March speed, but March speed is valuable. Attack, not so valuable, but still 65% of stats on one skill. His next skill, he gets even more damage factor. He's got a bunch of health. On his fourth skill, he gives himself a damage reduction whenever he takes skill damage, which is insane because you can take an active skill and then reduce the second skill after that by 30%. He even gives his allies a shielding effect. So, CPO is buffing, he's debuffing, he's giving himself stats, he's giving himself a ton of March speed, he's giving himself extra damage and he's also making himself more tanky while buffing your allies. There is literally nothing in Scipio's kit that says he is a bad commander at all. Every single skill is extremely valuable, just like Nevsky. His expertise is probably the least valuable thing in his kit, but it has use with specific commanders. And overall, Scipio is one of the strongest infantry commanders. Now, one thing that really puts Scipio above all the other commanders, though, above Zulang, above Nevsky especially, is that his pairing, his main, main pairings are really, really, really strong because they've got AoE themselves. CPO with Lao Che is the main pairing for CPO right now. And if you had a 5511 Lao Che and a 5551 CPO, so that's first three skills in CPO, first two skills in Lao Che, you've got a double AoE, double debuffing absolute beast. You're going to be ridiculous on the open field. The amount of damage you're going to deal is insane. The amount of AoE kills you're going to get is insane. And you're going to notice with the CPO Africanus, if you have him with a good AoE commander, even with a Guan, you can rack up a million kill points in one report much quicker than I could with a Zulang. And the only time I really get a million kill points with my Zulang, who is expertise, is when I literally have him running with YSG and I'm just grinding kills. So unless you're running those double AoE marches, you're never going to get that many kills. But CPO Africanus, all of his best pairings have been double AoE commanders. Guan Yu with Scipio was one of his best pairings. Lache with Scipio is his new best pairing. So you can notice the trend there where Scipio Africanus with any AoE commander is always going to be the meta. And because of that fact, you just put him with Lauche. You got Scipio, Lauche, one of the strongest pairings in the game. Double AoE, absolute beast. I just cannot say he is anywhere below rank one. So now that I've told you which commanders I think are the best free-to-play low spender pairings, do you think I missed any commanders in specific? Maybe you think I didn't give enough credit to commanders like Alexander the Great, who are really, really good in the early game, or maybe I didn't give enough credit to really low investments like Artemisia. So let me know in the comments down below, which commanders do you think deserve a little bit more recognition in these videos? Which commanders have you personally run as a free-to-play player and been very, very happy with? Let me know in the comments. I'm very, very interested to hear which commanders you really enjoy. I'm always happy to change my opinions like I did with Hao Che Bing. I said that Nevsky was worse than Hao Che Bing. That was obviously a completely wrong choice, and I've rectified that now. So let me know in the comments what you think about the commanders that I gave in today's video. And if you think there are any other commanders, also do let me know. I tried to read every single comment, and I will try to reply to every single comment as well. Now, I just want to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.